Hello everyone, a very warm good afternoon to all of you. I would like to welcome you all to the first session of Genomics in the Virtual Lab. In this online program, students will learn about genomic sequence analysis, the relationship between sequence and function, as well as computational biology methods. After completing the two-week uh, program, the students will gain a deeper understanding of the computational tools that will allow scientists to study genomic data, to understand genetic diseases, and the way our DNA is a key to more personalized and precise medicine. The program includes two-hour online lectures and hands-on exercises to provide a mix of theoretical and practical learning opportunities. So in today's session, we will introduce you to the program, the mentors, give an overview of the tools and resources for this program, which includes Omics Logic Learn Courses, Projects, and the T-BioInfo Analytics Platform. We will also discuss about how to access these resources and make sure that all of you have your credentials. To the, towards the end, we will also discuss about the expectations and schedule review for the training program and discuss some important guidance. Now, uh, to introduce myself, I'm Sonalika Ray and I'm the Omics Logic Community Manager and I'm responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users that are a part of our bioinformatics community, which is managed by Pine Biotech. So before we begin with today's uh, session, we have some interested participants who, are, who have joined today's uh, session and I would like to introduce ourselves to them. We are a US-based bioinformatics company and we are working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy to use analytical tools and our mission here is to make bioinformatics more accessible. And over the past several years, we have had the privilege of working with a number of organizations, developing a training program for research-oriented students, faculty, and democratizing bioinformatics, making this discipline accessible to thousands of students and faculty around the world. The Omics Logic research-based training programs are a, are a result of close co collaboration between Pine Biotech and numerous academic institutions that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. The training follows a project-based learning approach which uses research-grade tools to analyze data from top peer-reviewed journals, and the training has been completed by students, researchers, and faculties in six different specialization tracks, which include Oncology, Infectious Diseases, Precision Medicine, Neuroscience, Data Science for Biomedical Data, and Comprehensive Training on Omics Data Analysis. The training has been completed by over 24,000 participants from 187 countries in over 300 workshops. And due to this fast growth, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine the local program logistics and leverage our online training resources, adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. I would like to introduce the founders and the team members of the company. Dr. Alfred Tauber, he comes from a medical background with an expertise in oncology, immunology, and biochemistry of information. And one of his major projects is the establishment of Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center, which has been at the core of what we do. Dr. Leonid Brodsky is the director of Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center and is an expert in bioinformatics and biostatistics. And our platform is a result of hard work by some of the people who are mentioned here on the right. Julia Panov is an expert bioinformatician. Avi Titovsky leads the development of T-Bioinfo platform. Dr. Mohit Mazumdar is an experienced bioinformatician with multiple publications in top peer-reviewed journals. And he has been developing collaborations with universities as a mentor and project lead for Omics Logic Training and Research Fellowship. And Dr. Raghavendran Lakshmi Narayanan is an accomplished computational biologist with an experience in large-scale analysis of multi-omics data and data science methods in precision oncology and protein DNA structural bioinformatics. 
So now let's get into the training program. I would like to first of all discuss about the resources that you will get an access to that comes along with this program. So the Omics Logic Learn Portal is for practical and theoretical learning of bioinformatics. I will shortly take you to the portal and show you all how to navigate easily on the portal and have an updated profile. The courses on this portal are designed to take you through the theoretical knowledge. Omics Logic takes a combination of training modules, data analysis tools, curated project data sets, and interactive sessions with mentors to give a student a clear path of the Bloom's taxonomy pyramid. And no matter what the user's initial experience with bioinformatics is, Omics Logic is a useful tool for gaining a baseline knowledge of the theory behind bioinformatics, analysis of large data sets, and an introduction to basic coding languages like R and Python, or beginning a data analysis project. The participants will be given the directions to access the T-Bioinfo platform for bioinformatics processing and analysis of transcriptomics data. The platform includes demo pipelines as well as data management and analysis cloud infrastructure to run these pipelines. And different stages of analysis are performed in different sections of this multi-omics platform. The program comes with an access to the Omics Logic courses, which includes courses on bioinformatics, precision medicine, multi-omics, which includes genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, epigenomics, data science that includes bioinformatics using R and Python. And also you will get the access to various example projects in these different fields, which you could learn from and replicate your research work. So now let's quickly uh, sign up on the Omics Logic Learn portal if you, you have not signed up yet. And if you have signed up, then we'll uh, discuss about the program page. I'll be just resharing my screen. So here we are on the Omics Logic Learn portal. And this is the program page that I'll be shortly getting back to and we'll discuss the schedule and also how you can access the recordings and the associated resources that comes along with the program. But before we do that, I would really like to discuss how you can navigate easily on the Omics Logic Learn portal, but before that, how to have an account and an updated profile. So I'll share the link in the, uh, thank you so much, Ojasi, for sharing the link in the chat box. And uh, now if you have already signed up on the portal, please put a yes or maybe one in the chat so that I know you have signed up or you can take a minute and do so, so that if you face any issues, our team is here and we'll be able to help you out with the same. I'll be taking a pause here for a minute to allow you the time to open up your account so that you can also follow the, uh, instructions and uh, look at the courses that we go through in the session today. I'll be awaiting responses in the chat box if you can put a yes or one maybe so that I know that you have signed up and then we can proceed ahead. All right, so I'm hoping that you have signed up. Now, once you have an account on the Omics Logic Learn portal, the next step is to complete your profile. An updated profile is really important because it lets the mentors know about your achievement and also uh, it would help you enhance your uh, CV. So it's very important for you to have an updated profile, which includes a profile picture Make sure that the capitalization of your name is in the proper format. Please link in your social media accounts and add a brief bio about yourself. This brief bio could include about your educational background or your research interests and what are your aspirations. And for every coursework that you complete on the Omics Logic Learn portal, you will get some points for the very same that will take you from a beginner's level to an expert level. 
you'll be able to look at your achievement and also the mentors will be able to monitor your progress on the portal via this profile tab itself where they, they can see which all coursework have you completed and uh, once your coursework is completed you'll be able to download a certificate from the profile section itself and share your achievements now coming back to the program genomics in the virtual lab so this is the program page for uh, the very same program for which we are meeting today. I'll be putting the link in the chat box. Now, once you are here on the program page, uh, this page will list out the schedule of the program, which includes when the session is scheduled for which date and what are the specific topics that are supposed to be covered on that particular day. So today is July 18th and we have the first session today. The topics that we'll be covering would be about Amos technologies in the 21st century, the role of big data in biomedicine, data resources and tools. And we have explained what all outcomes you, you could achieve from today's session. And also, along with each session, you are supposed to go through some of the associated online resources. Make sure that once the session is over, you go through all these lessons that we have mentioned here as an associated online lesson. Now, these resources are actually the lessons uh, from the coursework on the portal itself. They, these are hyperlinked, so when you click on it, you'll be redirected to the lesson. Please make sure that once the session is complete, you watch the recording, revisit all the topics that we have discussed, and also complete the associated resources. We have listed out the sessions and their schedule uh, here on the program page itself. So the participants will have that access to this program page where they where they can see all the details for a particular session, including the recordings as well. We'll go in much greater detail of each and every session that is scheduled uh, with the mentor. So that was about creating an account, updating your profile, and going to the program page for session schedule. Now I would like to pass on the stage to the mentor, Dr. Raghavendran for taking the session ahead and getting started with the very first session of genomics in the virtual lab. So over to you, Dr. Raghavind. Thank you very much, Sonalika. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first session of genomics in virtual lab. Let me find ways to share my screen. So is my screen visible? Yes, sir, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> <I'm sorry. Let> me... <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. So welcome to the first session of uh, Genomics in Virtual Lab uh, um, online program. And I'm excited to uh, share with you the first in the first lesson, we are going to uh, get ourselves introduced to bioinformatics as, uh, as a basic or what is bioinformatics. And what are the different technologies that uh, uh, that we use, or what are the different applications of bioinformatics from genomics point of view, and how big data shaped uh, or is continuing to shape the bio biomedicine and research uh, field in the uh, biological uh, research area. So to begin with, let's ask the question: What is bioinformatics? So. Um, <clears throat> You can be, it can be uh, stated as it is a convergence of all the three aspects of uh, biology, statistics, and informatics. So uh, who uses bioinformatics and, and who is it for? And, and it could be different. The answer could be uh, statisticians, could be engineers or computer scientists, depending upon what is the question that they ask. But the, the truth are more and more people from biology or biologists and clinicians are now expected to understand and to handle their own data and the um, uh, trends in the data to publish, to succeed in basic and translational research. So this marks a rapid change or this marks a, a phenomenal change in the biological science itself, right? The science itself is rapidly acquiring the characteristics of data science. So, <laughs> So as a result, what we have is a growing interest among biologists and clinicians for data. And this data includes new types of data like uh, computational methods of data analysis for existing data, and as well as approaches to find new patterns and uh, 
existing pattern that can explain biological phenomena or explain different characteristics of the biological samples. So some of the major outcomes due to these changes in the approaches to biological studies include notable new discoveries such as new treatments and treatment options and, uh, and new diagnostic assays and new design strategies for experimentation are all possible. And uh, the, the whole world of diagnostics and therapeutics expanded its horizons due to the income or due to the influx of data analytics and data oriented biological research. So this is possible with the tremendous growth and availability of uh, a large volume of high throughput genomics data, which we will allocate more time to explore various repositories and data types and project examples. And all of these can be used and all of these can be leveraged to explore and understand how generally bioinformatics analysis of high throughput sequencing data or genomics data is used in biological research question and how they are effective in helping us understand some key aspects of biology that has not been uh, that has been untouched before a lot of breakthrough in in this bioinformatic research are a result of uh, high throughput sequencing technology or next generation sequencing technology that generates a large volume of data billions and billions of data points on genes on on proteins on, on other molecules that characterizes biological systems and phenomena. So, <laughs> and these data as such are compiled into databases and data repositories that can be systematically studied and explored to understand, interrogate, and establish trends for many applications. So one such repository is maintained by the National Center for Biotechnology Information or NCBI in short, which has a collection of all peer reviewed or most of the peer reviewed biomedical articles and biological data sets and projects on various topics. So um, one advantage of all of these repositories interlinked with one major uh, umbrella database like NCBI is, if you try to open a data set from gene expression omnibus, then we will get an associated publication link and associated projects that is submitted or that is that contains all the uh, raw data set for that specific uh, data page. So we can use such publicly available data repositories to answer key questions or to explore biological trends as, as I have already mentioned. So at the at the fundamental level, what are we looking for in trying to explore these data sets? So we are looking for uh, trying to find bugs in the code. So bugs in the genomic code. We all know that the genomic code codes for almost all of the proteins and all uh, and the function that it is responsible for maintaining the cells, phenotypical state and functional state. So there are bugs in the code, just like uh, bugs in any uh, any um, uh, data storage system. So we want to identify these variations, so these bugs. So these bugs can actually include examples uh, from genetic diseases or hereditary diseases like sickle cell anemia, where one nucleotide or one base change from T to A result in a major phenotypical or morphological change of the red blood cells. And yeah. due to this, we have a, a deficient uh, oxygen carrier in our blood and we get anemic response. And we will also look at some excellent example applications of genomics like genomic variants affecting drug metabolism by uh, changing the enzymatic function. We will also look at an assorted mutations or somatic mutations that leads to tumor genesis or tumor development. We already spoke about sickle cell anemia, but that is not the only inherited mutations in this case. And we will also take a look at rare genetic diseases or genetic disorder uh, that can arise from gene variations and functions. And finally, we can also uh, explore development of drug resistance in pathogens like, for example, Mycobacterium tuberculosis and, uh, and other pathogens, which are increasingly becoming resistant to one or multiple drugs that is used to do, treat them. So to give you an overview of how this process is done. So once a, a patient is actually um, uh, submitting their 
samples for further analysis. So upon receiving the DNA sequencing results, for example, for a sick patient, the first question that they will ask is, which genes are all affected? And this is not a very simple question, simple question to answer. So therefore, genomics uh, is already being used in diagnostics and clinical care, but many of the variants and many of the differences that we just spoke about, which could be responsible for the development of or onset of the disease or the condition are still being discovered and still being annotated and uh, validated and rigorously analyzed by a diverse team of scientists all over the world. So for example, to give you some of the examples of these variations and their uh, pathological responses, uh, we have in cancer, a DNA variation can help determine genetic risk associated with oncogenes, but more often, oncologists or biologists will look for mutations or somatic mutations that um, uh, in something like uh, in a subset of genes, which are called oncogenes, or sometimes tumor suppressor genes, or sometimes a family of DNA repair genes. So since cancer is more uh, most often uh, associated or it occurs with uh, aging, many researchers see the accumulation of somatic mutations in key genomic regions as a combination of mutations that drive the tu tumor progression. And there are also other mutations which just tag along and uh, uh, for, uh, for some time they do not cause any uh, um, uh, ill effects, right? but uh, uh, they do not cause any um, uh, uh, terminal effects, but they're called as passenger mutations. So eventually the, with the help of genomic data analysis, it is absolutely necessary to evaluate the risk of the severity of the tumor progression. And uh, um, through the analysis of these different mutations like passenger mutations and the combination of driver mutations in one or more involved genes, right? Uh, these analysis and these evaluation will help us select appropriate treatment to slow down or to even sometimes manage or maintain the incurable cancer that is uh, at, at some stage or at metastatic uh, stages. So one gene in particular that I want to highlight is P53 protein gene, that is tumor protein 53 gene, which is responsible for tumor suppression in healthy cells. So it is implicated in many cancers and this gene of, uh, in its normal functionality prevents tumor growth through the process called programmed cell death or apoptosis. Some mutations in this gene can lead to loss of function. And ultimately, uh, many mutations, accumulated mutations in this gene at various different positions will promote tumorigenesis or onset of tumor by not controlling the replication of cells with damaged DNA. So identifying these mutations or these subset of mutations will be key in uh, evaluating the risk for uh, patients or any uh, healthy person mm -hmm. for developing on or uh, for uh, yeah for developing tumorigenesis or for developing tumor <laughs> so other diseases like cystic fibrosis right like, or can also be linked to individual genes like this in this case it is uh, linked to the transmembrane conductance regulator gene or cftr genes in which mutations will actually uh, affect the function of the channel that is responsible for clearing the mucus from airways. And, and this is, uh, this once we have identified these specific genes, it is also possible to target these specific genes for uh, successful inhibition or successful response or treatment responses for cases like cystic fibrosis. It is also uh, it is also um, demonstrated that it is possible to target these genes in cystic fibrosis case, but unfortunately, it is not uh, always yeah, it is not always uh, uh, responsive. But for some, for whom uh, uh, these uh, treatments are responsible, uh, responsive, it is very valuable information, and and they are treated in such cases. So one more uh, disease, or some more diseases, can be inherited. Uh, diseases, meaning uh, the aberrations or the variations that you find in the uh, genomic code can be inherited from your parents. 
So in this case, uh, we are going to discuss about Huntington's disease, which is an inherited condition where one specific gene on chromosome four has an abnormal count or abnormal number of codons that uh, CAG codons. So uh, the, the HTT gene is the one that we are talking about discussing. And this gene will encode a large Huntington protein. And this additional repeats changes the protein structure and resulting in progressive movement disorder with dementia and behavioral abnormalities. So some of the typical signs emerge in midlife, but, uh, but heavy juvenile onset and uh, early uh, onset cases can also be seen. So um, diagnosis is typically based on uh, behavioral, uh, uh, behavioral um, examination and uh, presence of characteristic motor signs, but the disorder will actually uh, result in a decline in intellectual and psychiatric uh, abilities. And sometimes uh, death ensures after a median of approximately 18 years. So in 2015, the consortium, the Huntington Consortium published a study of over 1000 individuals with early and late onset of this disease. So applying specific targeted sequencing effect and as well as whole genome sequencing effort the researchers discovered that important regulation mechanisms that differentiated between these groups uh, provided insight into other mutations as so, such shown here in chromosome 15, right? Um, that were associated with slower development of the clinical onset. This study, as well as other uh, whole genome uh, sequencing or uh, genome-wide association studies can help identify rare mechanisms and mechanisms of disease progression and potential therapeutic interventions that will leverage natural mechanisms of these disease regulations. And uh, to change or to shift our focus from, uh, uh, from application to human disease point of view uh, or human data point of view, some of the important genomics data comes from the pathogens uh, point of view, uh, as you, we would have already been encountered a lot of uh, information from media about the SARS pandemic, the COVID pandemic that we are currently in. And now we are actually trying, we are going to discuss about tuberculosis drug resistance, where uh, we already know that TB or tuberculosis uh, in full form is a contagious infection that usually affects the lungs. So it can also spread to other parts of the body like spine and like brain, which are more severe. And um, this is due to a specific bacteria, type of bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the pathogen that causes it. So this, is a this was the leading cause of death in 20th century in USA. And today, most of the cases are usually cured with heavy antibiotics uh, program or regime. But recently there are uh, uh, findings that this bacteria has become more and more resistant to one type of antibiotic or even multiple different antibiotic. So it turns out that the resistance is actually a result of mutation in specific genes or set of genes or promoters. So to understand the understanding of which genes or what antibiotic and the mechanism of resistance development are all large part of developing novel drugs that will address this surge in multi-drug resistant tuberculosis infection. And proceeding on further from bacteria to virus, we already uh, introduced you. So <laughs> viruses are especially prone to acquiring a large number of mutations in a very short amount of time, where this specific virus or Ebola virus is an example of RNA virus that cause severe disease with a heavy high mortality rate, right? We already know that during the outbreak uh, or epidemic of 2014 to 2016, the genomic sequencing or next generation sequencing has been heavily applied in near real time, uh, 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 time uh, track to, to follow or to track the spread of this epidemic and to develop effective vaccines. So as a result, many researchers are now focusing their attention on potential mutations of this virus and several other viruses that may have profound effect on general vaccine efficacy and uh, effect on the transmission rates of this specific virus, which is now contained. But uh, we want to understand a, a full spectrum of the ability of this virus to get transmitted and to uh, uh, 
and to uh, and their responses to vaccines. And this can straight away apply to SARS-CoV pandemic also, which we already know that without the effects, efforts of next generation sequencing or high throughput sequencing, we will not be able to quickly develop or uh, uh, change or modify the vaccine that is now available for multiple different variants and multiple different lineages of SARS-CoV-2. So all of these are possible using most up-to-date technology that uses sequences of, or that uses DNA or RNA to sequence them into, uh, uh, sequence them into digital data. So this digital data is acquired from taking the biological sample and then subjecting it to, uh, uh, for example, steps like shearing and steps like um, amplification and, and uh, sequencing, which will convert these uh, biological sample into digital sample, right? This digital sample is still unstructured as, as it reads only all the characters of the genome uh, um, in, in multiple different file formats. So <laughs> multiple different file formats, yes. So uh, more technical uh, considerations need to be taken care or need to be uh, used to, to perform an in-depth analysis, uh, which will uh, prepare the data, which will also pre-process the data and map the data to the respective whole genome sequence of the reference, uh, whole genome sequence, uh, reference sequence of the, uh, um, of the sample, and then generate a structured genomic data, which will list all possible variation or all observed variations that we can find out from sequencing our sample. So these variations can be of different types and their effects can also be our uh, results can also be of different or varied types. So for example, a change in, uh, in morphological character or in appearance might not be detrimental or might not be um, very um, um, dangerous or very harmful to the source organisms. But there can also be variations that, uh, that uh, creates or that results in large uh, uh, morphological and phenotypical changes or sometimes even uh, acquiring of novel characters or novel uh, functionalities. But if they are not harmful for the samples or they're not harmful for the host cell, then they're not termed as mutations. But there are some variations which are pathogenic in nature or which results in harmful results or loss of functionality, altered state of functionality, which, which, will, uh, which will completely um, <coughs> Uh, disable the system to function normally. So those variations are termed as pathogenic mutations. So whenever you hear the term variations, so any genetic variation with respect to a reference sequence of that organism is a variation or variance. And when you hear the term mutation, it's only those variants which are um, pathogenic in nature or uh, functionally uh, aberrant to the to the host uh, organism is termed as mutation. So when genomic variants are discussed, both as I mentioned, mutations and variations, and sometimes polymorphisms are also used interchangeably. So most of these variants are focus of single nucleotide change at the basic level. So some of these nucleotide change can fall under non-coding region of the genome, and some of them can fall under coding regions of the genome. The coding regions code for the protein and non-coding regions may code for proteins or may code for other functionalities like uh, promoter or splicing uh, variants or sometimes silent mutation that does not change anything in the resulting uh, outcome of the organism's function. So the distinction between the variants and uh, mutants or uh, variants and polymorphism is that it is based on the frequency with which it occurs in a population of a uh, sample. Right, um, rare mutations tend to have, as we may, as we already saw, functional impacts that actually completely changes from the wild type, or which is also known as most common form, and this uh, yields uh, in a higher difficulty in obtaining greater signal to noise ratio for the detection of this rare mutation, which is by uh, by definition it is rare to find. So in order to get uh, a frequency distribution of observing this rare mutation in a, in a sample, so we have to uh, sequence a large number of sample populations. 
So in contrast, for example, polymorphisms that, uh, that are generally <coughs> um, not detrimental, right, or less functionally deviant, uh, they are variants that are not very rare. Right? Some rare ones are also found, but they are not very rare. They are reasonably common and they have, sometimes they might have major functional impact also. So for example, um, yeah, yeah, uh, a good example of these, uh, of these mutants or of these variations is, is from, um, from the mutation in FGFS gene that causes extremely long hair and eyebrows and eyelashes in people, which, which are uh, not very, uh, yeah, which are functionally difficult for them to uh, go about in their daily life. And uh, you might also find this is an example of, of, uh, of a mutation that causes changes in the phenotype. Right? And there are also a relationship or studies um, that results in uh, observing one single nucleotide polymorphism being responsible for the, uh, for the blue eye variant in the Caucasian uh, population. So <laughs> we have an example for detrimental mutation. We have an example of uh, not uh, uh, changes. Not, I mean, we have an example of changes in phenotypical or morphological character of the mutation. So these applic these observing or these uh, identifying these mutations can actually be applied uh, or can uh, yield or is already yielding significant results for uh, different uh, different. <coughs> areas of research in pharmaceutical and bio, biotechnological companies all around the world. We can, for example, study uh, grouping the patient by their, uh, um, by their um, uh, tendency or by their, pro, um, yeah, by their propensity to, uh, to the onset of tumor by patient stratification. We can characterize the disease and, uh, and improve the diagnostics uh, uh, accuracy. We can also identify, for example, um, patients who are potential responders to specific set of therapy or specific um, uh, subset of therapies. So this will straight away fall into the personalized uh, medicine and, and precision medicine uh, category. And then we can also understand the mechanisms of disease onset and progression from the pathogen's point of view um, so that we can uh, <coughs> Uh, target specific targets that uh, uh, that will help us fight this, fight the spread and fight the in infection of these pathogens. So, from a from a more basic science point of view, uh, genomics uh, research are uh, uh, trying to find connection between the variants that we observe and the phenotypical characters on biological of these biological samples can straight away lead to biomarker discovery, which can further uh, help us understand the. Um, mechanisms between, behind the onset of this disease. This can also help us detect uh, toxicity at the in vitro stage of, uh, uh, of these rare diseases. They can also help us um, identify that specific target protein from analyzing molecular mechanisms of this drug action, uh, which can bind to multiple different proteins. So this target identification or target discovery is one of the key uh, steps in drug development, in discovery, uh, drug development uh, pipeline, and genomics and uh, omics data analysis contributes major, um, contributes in a very high uh, proportion to this uh, specific area. And we can also understand uh, the repurposing of repositioning of existing drugs, which can not only be uh, um, target to specific targets that they are designed for, but uh, there are also efforts in uh, uh, applying or finding alternative applications to the drugs that are already existing. So one popular case is a metformin drug, which is usually prescribed to uh, for diabetes patients, found itself uh, repurposed to two oncological treatments. So uh, I will take some questions if you have any, and if you do not have, let's go over the program and go over the uh, uh, different sessions that we are going to cover in the upcoming uh, days. If you have any questions, please uh, put them up in the chat. So if you do not have any questions, let's move ahead.
So this program is actually divided into two parts, roughly two parts, right? In the first part of the program, you will learn about the tools and data sets that, is, uh, that will help you understand um, protein structure and function and how we can use different analysis methods to understand the variants or mutations that we observed at the genomic level and how they translate into the protein level, whether or not the structures are where in the protein structures these mutations are found and whether or not they could affect the uh, functionality of the protein. So that, that we can uh, definitely uh, cover in this. The second part in a nutshell, we are going to dive more dive more into the genomics of biomedical research. So this is going to take, or this is going to consider the omics data, uh, genomics data analysis, and, and in various other uh, applications where they are applied in trying to understand uh, biology behind the infectious diseases, or uh, trying to understand the population of microbial communities in our body, or in any sample generally, and how they form pinnacle too identify and to develop antiviral drugs, vaccines, and antibiotics. Yeah. So yeah, this in bioinformatics tools and data in the first part, uh, we will learn about protein structure in general, and we will learn about introduce you to uh, visualize protein structure. We will introduce you to uh, perform multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic tree analysis that, can uh, that we can uh, implicate at the level of protein structure and functions. <clears throat> so these are all possible and uh, several resources pertaining to how to perform these can be, uh, uh, can be accessed using uh, the omics logic data, omics logics platform as explained by Asana Lika. You will also find a specific list of associated resources that are uh, given to you, that are listed out to you um, uh, at the in the program page, and also you will receive an email uh, before the beginning of or before the uh, before every session. Okay. So this is the introduction to bioinformatics session that we are actually discussing, and this is intended to introduce you to various other ways or uh, various applications of bioinformatics in general from a genomics point of view. So I see some specific questions which. Uh, which asks how to uh, differentiate in between variation and mutation, which I already told, right? Uh, any variance or any variation with respect to the uh, reference genome can be termed as variation and pathological variations can be termed as mutation. And more specific questions to regenerative me medicine, target identification, you can sign up for the program. So when we are discussing in that specific uh, session, we will have more time and more uh, slides to actually describe and dis discuss in detail. So right now, if I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to um, uh, talk to you without pointing out publication or without pointing out resources, and it's all going to be your monologues. So uh, it's better is to uh, uh, sign up for the program and wait for that specific uh, session where we can discuss these in detail and how to perform analysis to make use of these uh, specific target identification or repurposing of drugs. Also. That can also, we can discuss. So in the second, uh, in the next session, we are going to deal with protein structure and function, as I mentioned. So we, we are going to introduce you to uh, uh, different genomic variants. And as I mentioned, how these variants can affect protein functions or uh, affect protein functions and structure in detail. So we, the next session is going to be uh, a little bit of an hands-on session where we learn about sequence alignment and performing phylogenetic tree analysis to understand and to categorize the variants that we have learned so far. And then we can proceed further to expand that analysis at the genomic level to the amino acid level and visualize in, uh, in the structure, the occurrence or the, um, or the effect of these mutations at different levels, right? Some uh, silent mutations as you will learn might not change uh, the amino acid composition of the protein, but some mutations may alter the amino acid composition of the protein heavily. So we can, by mapping them onto the structure, once the structure is available, we can understand uh, where in structure these mutations are populated and whether or not they are very biologically relevant, we can relate that to the knowledge that we know about the protein and its function. And then we will learn about uh, some of the uh, re resources and databases from where we can extract large volumes of such data 
that we can use for understanding the uh, understanding this analysis and patterns in general. And we will also review how you, ha you have been progressing so far. And then we will get a mid-course assignment where you will be given a special uh, specific set of uh, uh, challenges to uh, overcome or challenges or um, uh, assignments to complete. And we will also discuss uh, these assignments uh, in detail. And then in the second part of the uh, program, we are going to talk more about omics data analysis uh, and, and uh, genomics contribution in understanding um, biology or bioinformatics in general. So we will start by uh, uh, reviewing uh, uh, available literatures and, and we will start by explaining to you or we will start by discussing how to perform or how to start or how to design a bioinformatics project. And why this is important? Because there are uh, very uh, uh, um, relevant uh, information regarding where to find data and how to relate from publication to data and also how to focus uh, your literature or your uh, research interests. Some of you might be very interested in precision oncology. Some of you might want to know a little bit more about infectious diseases. Some of you are really keen in understanding metagenomics or microbial population, but these are all very broad areas. So this session and the associated resources will help you focus that broad area into specific research topic where you want to uh, collect associated data and develop uh, methods that will help you understand or help you uh, um, answer the question that you have in mind. So we can focus in genomics in uh, genomics from the infectious diseases point of view in understanding the diversity and uh, uh, how these variants and diversity are helping or might help the pathogen uh, in its uh, uh, transmission or in its uh, increased virulence and etc. And we will also understand or expand how not one uh, are not a single genomic sequence of a virus, but a community of microbes can be studied using next generation sequencing analysis. And what are the different ways they are implicated and what are the different areas they are implicated in biological research? This is an exciting field of uh, application uh, of genomics research and, and, and a lot of interesting results are coming out in microbial or microbiome or metagenomic research in general. We will also further then focus on uh, development of vaccines and antibiotics uh, in infectious diseases categories and where we will in detail discuss about how a virus will actually hijack host protein uh, function uh, protein uh, proteins and machinery uh, to perform its own uh, function so viruses are elegant in their design that they pack only what is absolutely necessary so in order for the virus to successfully uh, replicate, it has to uh, take or it has to trick the host by uh, to um, supply their own protein machinery to for its own function. So we will discuss in what are the ways that um, uh, this virus will actually uh, progress uh, from infecting uh, one cell to uh, multiply. And we will also um, see how in generally they evade uh, the immune system. So one of the important ways how a virus actually uh, transmits is uh, it tricks our immune system to uh, believe that they are not uh, foreign particles. So this is not always successful, but when it is successful, we already know that uh, how um, how um, how dangerous it can get. We already have a pandemic situation to handle. So we will also have a hands-on session of uh, identifying data, data sets and resources from where we can perform the analysis that we have been focusing so far. So we have been, we would have been until now, be able to perform some basic analysis on uh, genomics data, uh, be it uh, data from next generation sequencing or be it a data that is submitted to the repository in the form of whole genome sequences. So this session will actually tell you what are the different ways and what are the different questions that you can ask from, um, uh, uh, from this available uh, data that we can use it to uh, answer these questions. So for example, if you use the NCBI virus uh, platform, you can simply ask a question, when was the first Ebola virus genome was uh, submitted or uh, sequenced? Right? What is the earliest Ebola virus uh, occurrence? And uh, similarly, what are the earliest SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus 
that was actually submitted and identified. What is the relationship between SARS-CoV-2-1 and SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2? And these are all the ways you can ask questions to understand generally about um, viral um, <coughs> propagation or transmission. So finally, you will have uh, you will have a project presentation, and and you can actually discuss any of the project submission uh, on your own which will uh, use the methods that we have been discussing and the data that we have been trying to explore and trying to find. And, um, and we will discuss about the, um, about the tweaks that is necessary to make this project into a successful project. You can sign up for a research project, uh, a research fellowship program if you are interested in uh, continuing with the project and, um, and explore further how you can uh, make use of these data and how you can put uh, the knowledge that you learned in a practical uh, application. If you have any queries until now, please uh, let me know. Yeah, apart from the specific questions. And if we have time at the end of today's session, then we can actually just uh, talk very briefly about some of the questions that I have here from Pravinia and from um, Dr. Valkis. So now, if you do not have any question, I will pass the stage to uh, Sonalika or Sparsh. I think uh, one of you are going to take over from me. Thank you very much. Hello, Sonalika. Yes, sir. Yes, so we okay. have uh, some questions sir, that uh, I would just. Yes, I just mentioned. I just mentioned to everybody that these questions are very specific, and they can uh, better be answered with a lot of supporting slides and supporting uh, information in this specific session in this respective sessions. Right, that can also done. But now I will pass the stage to you to uh, help them out with the registration process. Right. And Honestly. if we have if we have time at the end, then I can tend to these questions in a very general point of view. All right, thank you so much. So now I would like to take the interested participants through the registration process. For those who have not registered yet, please visit the program page itself. And once you scroll down, you will be able to register yourself by picking any of the three options for uh, the time duration that you would like to enroll yourself. It could either be 45 days or 60 days or 90 days. And we have uh, listed here all the resources that you will get an access to uh, along with these different times of durations. And also we have some possibilities of scholarships with us. We have some scholarships uh, left with us. You can reach out to marketing at the rate on project.com. Thank you so much, Sparsh, for sharing your email address. Please share your phone number as well for the Indian contacts to reach out to you directly. And uh, Sparsh will help you enroll in the program with the scholarships that you would like to uh, pick for any of the durations that you would like to enroll. That was it about the registration process. We have listed the resources here. In 60 days, you will be able to come to the research proposal that you, you can submit for your uh, master's or PhD application or if it's uh, if it's required and also frame your research question to work on your research project finally and the outcome of the 60 days program would be a poster presentation and you'll be able to work on a research project and publish it on an Omnisogic Learn portal and also take it forward to publish it in, an, uh, in a good, good reputed journal and the outcome for 90 days would be a research publication that are the major differences in these uh, three different access times and also the difference lies on the type of license that you get on the TBI info server for 60 days the license on the TBI info server is educational and for 90 days it is a research license that you, you can pick uh, that you, you will get and will be able to upload data from various uh, public freely available data repositories that you can download these data sets and then work on them to analyze and look at some meaningful biological insights. 
So that was it, how you can get yourself registered for the program. We'll be closing the registrations in two more days. So if you're interested to enroll and get started with your journey in genomic data analysis, uh, you can enroll yourself and proceed ahead. So that was it that I wanted to address. Uh, if there are any other questions, please put them in the chat related to registration and scholarship so that we can address them. All right, so if there are no more questions, I think we're good to end today's session. And uh, if in case you have a question that you would like Sparsh to address for you for getting yourself registered, you can reach out to her. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a nice day.